My name is Denver Casado and I'm a composer. Um, it's kind of a mixture of both at the same time actually. Um, typically Doug and I will sit together in the same room and we'll talk about the song that we want for that moment. Um, we'll decide uh, what the hook should be, which is the line that repeats over and over again in the song. And then I'll sit down at the piano and start kind of playing around with some stuff and um, eventually I'll come up with a melody to that hook and, uh, and I'll start writing some more music around that hook and then eventually once we have a firm melody in place Doug will start writing more lyrics to that. Um, and after that first session of sitting together, we'll go off on our own and whole work with a melody and, and start writing lyrics and I'll flesh out all the piano stuff underneath. So it all kind of happens at the same time and it's a little bit of a back and forth the whole way through. So chords are these uh, three note blocks that are kind of built together. This is just a regular C major chord. And you have two, ma two main different kinds. You have a major chord, which sounds kind of pleasant and happy, or you have a minor chord, which might sound a little bit darker. And as a composer, you're always using these different chords to evoke different emotions for what's right for the moment, what the character is feeling. For example, in the beginning, Sam's really happy. He's singing about going on a steamboat. So I have all these major chords. When things uh, get a little bit sadder, I might use more minor chords that evoke a very different feeling. Probably one of my favorite songs is the title song, Life on the Mississippi. I think because it does kind of capture such a, a wonderful energy, um, lyrically and musically, of what Sam is feeling about being on the river. And when the, when the music starts, I feel like it, you kind of immediately get an image of your head of being on the river while the sun is, is coming up. I have never seen such a river. I have never seen such a sky. I have never seen such a boat like I'm sailing in Henry, I'll tell you. So that type of feeling, I feel, is, uh, is really fun. It works well on the show. Bixby song, Find Your Way, we struggled a lot with. We probably went through four or five different versions of that song before uh, we found one that we really liked. And I think that's because it was difficult to have this gruff uh, captain or give this very touching um, kind of inspirational uh, song. And we struggled with musically and lyrically the tone of that, whether, you know, he should be... Um, singing so much or, or whether it should be more conversational and eventually we, it's kind of like a mixture of both actually there's the, the song is kind of a ballad but it's also spoken like naturally he would to his cub pilots you draw your charts your ship departs but nothing's really planned no map can show what storms may blow Yet every day you find your way home. Right, I am Douglas M. Parker officially, and I wrote the book, which is the script, and the lyrics. Initially, I started with Life on the Mississippi, or actually, this is just based on part of Life on the Mississippi. Uh, where young Samuel Clemens goes off to become a steamboat pilot. Uh, but to flesh out the characters and really understand and be able to create that world or recreate that world better, I also looked at uh, the letters that Twain wrote at the time, uh, other books that he'd written, his autobiography. Uh, this, the part of Life in Mississippi that, I'm, that I use is autobiographical, but obviously there's other material in his actual autobiography. Um, and then also I used other stories he's written that may not have been uh, entirely non-fictional. Well, all of the major characters in the show are real. 
<clears throat> the two pilots that he works under, Mr. Bixby and Mr. Brown, uh, his brother who plays a major part in the show, the only major character who uh, is, is not real at all or, and, and does not appear in any of Mark Twain's books is the girl Adele, although I created her from a little one paragraph incident uh, where he mentions a girl that he was competing for, not with his brother, but with another cub pilot, uh, another apprentice pilot. And, uh, and, and in fact, in, in that story, the, the other pilot got the girl. <laughs> there are a number of differences, and if you, they, a lot of them become immediately apparent if you just read some lyrics, or if you don't know what the tune is, uh, lyrics are frequently very bad poetry, um, but you put them together with the music, with, with the rhythm of the music, with the heightened emotion of the music behind it, and you get something much more powerful. Also, uh, poetry of course has a rhythm, but with, with music there are very distinct accents throughout every line, and you have to hit them perfectly. Um, you know, if, if you want to say hello, you wouldn't say hello um, if the music is emphasizing that, that first syllable. So you have to find another word. You'd have to say, hi there, or whatever. There are, there are certain cues. Uh, the character, if the character is very meticulous, uh, then something with a lot of rhymes in it makes sense for him, because he's that kind of person. If the character, on the other hand, is not very bright, then you can't have 27 rhymes in 28 words, because that's, that's not the way he speaks. You probably wouldn't want to have a lot of rhymes in a love song, which is just carried by an emotion. It's a very gentle emotion, but if the character's very angry, you might. I mean, I love that it's it's about a character that everyone knows of, but they don't really know. They know Twain's works, but they don't really know him as a person. And more than that, this is, this is Twain before he became Twain. So it's, even if you know the rough outline of his life, this is him when he's still a kid, uh, before he developed the famous cigar-smoking, mustached, white-suit-wearing persona, the, the folksy, the folksy guy. This is, he's an excited and excitable kid, and it's just fun to, to see him develop and to turn into a writer. This is before he's a writer. Sure, we met through uh, a mutual director friend of ours. Um, I was involved in this festival, and Doug came to see some plays in that festival, that I, um, and we both knew the director that was involved with that festival, and he just, uh, Doug at that time, was looking to turn the straight play into a musical. The director just introduced us, and Doug sent me the script. I read it. I thought, this is awesome. So called him up, and we started working together. The very first time we met, after Denver had read the script, but we'd never, uh, we'd never seen each other. I had no idea what he looked like, or and he had no idea what I looked like. And he came here, actually, and we talked about the script. And I said, do you want to try a song? And he said, sure. And I had this little toy keyboard, not this one, one about this big, and I pulled it out and we started writing uh, the first song of the show, and it's still in the show, Where I'm Going, that Sam sings as he's uh, leaving to become a steamboat pilot. <laughs> it, can be, it can be very challenging at times. Um, obviously we'll have disagreements about certain things at times, but one thing that we're really good at um, and which I think is important in our collaboration is that we're really good at talking a lot. And so when we have a disagreement, Doug will go off for a half hour saying why he thinks his way is right, and I'll go off for a half hour explaining why I think my way is right. And usually, actually, magically, by the end of that, we both somehow have an understanding of what the other, where the per other person has come from, and we'll come up with some sort of compromise, or he'll see it my way, or I'll see it his way. Um, but there definitely are times when that doesn't get resolved and ultimately he has final say on all the words, the books and the lyrics and I kind of have final say on the music, but we're always trying to find something that we're both happy with.